Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Lit RPG Podcast. I'm Rodem Hia, here to bring you the latest Lit RPG news, reviews, and of course author interviews. And this week I have four new reviews for you folks at home. I just got to apologize real quickly about uh, putting the podcast out a little bit later this week than it normally comes out. Um, hitting some seasonal depression myself uh, and, uh, you know, not feeling great. Had a couple losses the family, the community, a couple of Liberty authors are going under the knife pretty soon. Um, so, you know, it's that time that hits a lot of people. And But what gets me through it, what's getting me through it, I should say at this point, is uh, you guys, listeners, the viewers. Uh, the podcast, as I always say, it saved my life, as is the Little RPG community, giving me a voice, helping me connect with people that have the same passion for something that I love, um, helping me feel like I'm part of something. It's always something important. Uh, and sometimes just, you know, knowing that you're connected people. And so thank you guys for being listeners and being watchers of the podcast. It's, it's really been something that's really important to me. And I, it gets me <laughs> reading every week, keeps me doing the podcast every single week without fail, uh, because this is part of uh, what I do to manage that. Um, but it's also important to talk about it and, you know, be frank uh, with the people that you love and care about. So, uh, but move past that stuff again i apologize for just the lateness of the podcast um i do have four new little bit of reviews for you folks and that's going to include some really great stuff here this week um something uh full murder hobo i think the author wrote this just for the amount of fun puns you can do with something read something go check something out uh that kind of stuff we'll talk about that in a bit also this week we have a uh, reborn evolution a little bit series warlock chronicles book number one that we read and reviewed this week and Valentine's in an Apocalypse, a system apocalypse short story uh, by Tao Wong. And last but not least is I Am the Sorcerer King, which is a webcomic, uh, which we talked about what, what I thought about this week. Before we get into any of that, of course, we're going to go into Lit RPG News. <laughs> And this week in Lit RPG news, we have our first story about one of our favorite Lit RPG game lit authors, our narrators, uh, Justin Thomas James. He actually works at Sound with Theater a lot. He also does independent projects, um, doing recording for Game Lit and Lit RPG stuff. And he also has his own D and D tabletop podcast um, called Dice Shame. If you haven't checked it out, definitely go do that. Uh, um, but the story this week is that he's actually been featured his podcast. Um, on the actual Dungeons and Dragons website. Um, turns out Wizards of the Coast, the company behind D&D, of course, uh, checked it out and they liked it enough to ask them to do a, a produce a one-off episode for their official podcast. And so we should have a link in the show notes. You can go check that out. Uh, we're all super proud of him for being getting some good recognition. It probably helps that he's a voice actor and that he can bring some really fun stuff to it. Of course, with also his his other friends who are artists and are, are good at their stuff. So I think go check out their podcast and also the, the link for the show is for the D&D page. In other little bit of news, we have Michael Scott Earl, uh, who <laughs> lost the battle with Amazon and, and getting kicked off. Um, and But he's gone on to, to be an independent publisher, publishing very successfully um, by Indiegogo and Kickstarter for his works. Um, and he has a new Indiegogo out for, for the next book in the Space Knight series, which is a, a little bit of a gamelet story that has turned as the series gone on to something with more harem elements. Um, and it is up for you to go support. Uh, they had an original campaign goal for $15,000, which is not unreasonable, um, especially if you're producing physical books on your own, not through Amazon. Remember, he, he can't. Um, but also producing audiobooks and the, the ebook version of this thing. Um, and... Within five hours, they absolutely hit that goalpost. And currently, as of this recording, they're a bit over $24,000. That's how much support, that's how much love he has for his work and for the Space Knight series in particular, uh, that people are willing to shell out in pre order form, essentially, um, with some other perks. There are definitely some cool goals here if you're into that. Um, 
for for his work. So I'm always super proud of Max Scott for never giving up. And even though he lost his ability to publish on one platform, which is a big market, to be honest, um, he never gave up and he continued on in a different marketplace. And he's opened his own ebook store and published in other um, marketplaces for you guys to enjoy. So go support him if you're interested in his work. Um, and there are some very um, interesting reward options for people who support Inclu- I remember this is now an independent marketplace for this author. So he actually has some NSF, not safe for get NSFW <laughs> artwork uh, relating to his, the harem elements and the characters in his story that you can also get as campaign um, rewards if you're supporting him, uh, if you're into that. So lots of interesting things there, but this is a fun series that I always thought was nice. Um, in other little bit of news, we have Unbound Death Lord. Uh, the third book in that series is finally coming out. Uh, I think it's been about two and a half years since the second book came out. Uh, the author was nice and has sent us some information saying that he has release date, the cover art, and all that good stuff. Um, and also a preview copy, so <laughs> we'll get a review out when it comes out. Uh, but in addition to that, the author is also doing a sale for books one and two in the series in the U.S. and in the U.K. Uh, so for both our both types of uh, listeners and viewers. This is a great opportunity to get into a really good series. And the books are really thick. They're interesting and they're long and they're good reads. Book one is going to be for uh, 99 cents. Book two is going to be for $2.99. That's U.S. currency. So it'll be adjusted in the U.K. Uh, well, we'll link to the show notes for you guys to check out all the good deals. And then book three is up for pre-order. Um, it'll be out on, I want to say, September 22nd. Yeah. Um, so the other two books will be on sale until September 23rd, apparently. So great opportunity to get, uh, and to buy a really good series that I've always enjoyed. Okay. And some not so awesome news. We have more play to write story that I found on Amazon this week. Um, again, some of these stories, these are all ripped straight from the internet. People who have published on web novels or on real road, um, they're having their stories literally copy and pasted sometimes with the name proper names of some characters changed. Um, but then posted on Amazon and somebody else trying to make money off of their work. Um, with some of them even claiming copyright over these materials that, um, they don't think other people are going to actually, um, try to fight for. And sometimes that is the case, but in some good news, I've actually had a couple authors who have, uh, that I've, I've, I've tried to message all the authors that I talk about for these, for these books, uh, letting them know that someone is ripping them off and that they're publishing under the name and changing the titles or the, you know, a proper name of a character or something. Um, and some of the authors went back saying, Hey, thanks a lot for letting us know. And I've gotten a couple of updates saying that because of what we do in the podcast, because of what you as readers have notified them about, um, that they've actually gotten these plagiarized books taken down for Amazon because they've had proof, of course, that they're the original authors, that they've written this like a year ago and somebody else is just ripping them off. Um, so yay. So let's all keep up with the good work, leave reviews for the titles that are, are obviously plagiarized, letting other readers know that they are plagiarized. Um, that's what I'm doing, trying to make it unprofitable for them to continue to do this. Um, so there you go. Um, Onto the titles, though. Uh, we have Pandemonium Online, which is stolen from the web novel Omega Summoner. Again, in the show notes, we'll have links to the original uh, title and also the plagiarized title. Uh, that is actually, again, P- Pandemonium Online. Pandemonium Online is actually stolen as Omega Summoner from web novels. Um, also, Versatile World is a ripoff of a novel, web novel called Versatile Alternate World. I know, original. And they, they've also changed the name of the main character from M- M- Monato to Monaco. I know, so original. And yet they think that they're going to get away with it. Um, so please leave uh, one-star reviews to let other readers know that it's plagiarized. Also, Project Overworld is a ripoff of the web novel Project Overworld written by Cinerath. Um, as is, let's see, Fate's Reversal is a ripoff from the web novel Fate's Reversal, The Divine's Return, uh, which is another story from web novels directly. It looks like a lot of these uh, plagiarized authors have um, moved away from Royal Road to web novels because we let Royal Road out. And also a wonderful listener and also an author, um, Bonnie Price, was nice enough to let the people who run Royal Road know about this issue. And they've kind of gotten on top of it, letting their authors know and also talking to Amazon themselves. Um, And last but not least this week is going to be Game Master. The Soul Harvester is a copy of the online web novel, Game Master of Souls. Again, very subtle change. Um, but again, also super plagiarized. Again, we'll link to the show notes for the original web versions of these novels. You can enjoy them if you choose so. But also the plagiarized versions 
in case you wish to leave one star reviews so that again other readers will know these stories are stolen there you go okay on to stuff that's out now we have uh, some great books that i haven't had a chance to read yet but they're out for you to enjoy including glory to the rave the send online book number four out and a massive tomb for you to enjoy also out is stolen lies a little bit game lit novel the underhill chronicles and the third book in the olympus reborn series is out for you to enjoy as is the i want to say this is the third book it doesn't say in the title though um card mage silent society by the amazing eating red um that one's going to be a um adult novel <laughs> also although if you'd enjoy the comic um written by tao wong and also created from a system apocalypse series called the system apocalypse issue number six um so if you're looking for stuff to buy on amazon that are comic versions uh, this is always an interesting project so there you go and also out is true smithing book number two now i have had no, <laughs> no notifications about this i had nothing from the publishers i enjoyed book number one immensely um, I know a lot of people have enjoyed book number one of the series, but book number two is out for you right now. Um, you might not hear about it any other place, apparently. Uh, nobody's really, uh, the publisher or the author haven't talked about it yet. Uh, but it's out for you to enjoy if you like book number one in that series. Uh, the Ten Realms book number six, part one, is out for you to enjoy. That's the sixth realm. It actually says part A in the title, but in the cover it says part one. Uh, by my, the amazing Michael Chatfield. I've loved every book in the series. Uh, and the author said that he has part one for you here. It's here for you to enjoy. Uh, uh, he's hoping to get part two for you out in a couple weeks. Apparently, that's how long this story is. Uh, so, but it's here for you to enjoy uh, if you want to go check it out. In audiobooks, we have uh, some really good deals here for you, including Adventures on Brad books number four through six, which is an omnibus of that series. Uh, one credit for three books. That's it can't beat that deal. Also out is Akashi's Will, the Harbinger Chronicles book number one, uh, and the ebook version, and so the audiobook version of Stolen Lives Under Her Chronicles is out as an audiobook and as an ebook for you to enjoy if you want to go check that out. Um, in upcoming Litter BG, we have a few titles. I'm just going to read them off to you. September 21st is going to be Labyrinth of Tartarus. Uh, September 22nd, I was right. The third book in the Unbound Death Lord series called Unbound Death Lord Corruption. On September 23rd, this is actually a uh, move title. It was supposed to come out last Wednesday. The author updated us saying, I'm not going to compete with these other guys kind of this week. I'm just going to move this to next week on 23rd, which is not a bad idea. Um, and it'll be out. It's called the Guild Corps, book number one, Dragonborn. Um, so it's a cultivation um, adventure story with some you know dragon dungeon core elements that's all i'll say now i've read it um i'm still putting my review together for it get to, so it's ready for next week when it comes out uh but it'll be out on september 23rd september 29th it is me tycoon book number two on uh, september 29th the second book in the zero hero series on september 30th the great MacGuffin will be out uh, and i like the title uh, September 30th, it'll be the fourth book in the God's Game series. October 1st, it'll be the Bad Guys book number five. October the 1st, the Legends Online book number seven. October the 2nd, Dungeon Crawler Carl, which is, uh, I'm not sure what it's going to be. Um, it's from Matt Denniman, so you know it's going to be interesting. Uh, but I like the, I, I, I definitely like the cover. And I also like the um, little blurbs on the cover. It says, the same guy who wrote that gross kaiju book. And it says, uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and a bit of reality television thrown in. Read it. You'll have a blast. Cosimo Yap. <laughs> so he has some interesting blurbs on the cover. So like, I always got to give him credit for being super original and willing to take risks with his, his writing and being weird, which I love. Um, also out on October 3rd, it'll be Awaken Online, book number three in the Tarot series. This is a side series again, remember. We can online book number three in the Tarot series. October the 6th, it'll be Watcher's Fate, Life of Exile, book number three. Um, October the 6th, it'll be Monsters, Maces, and Magic, book number five. October the 7th, it'll be City of Goblins in the System, book number one. October 26th, The Other World, Underdog, book number four. On October 27th, the third book in the Eternal Online series. November the 3rd, The Cards of Fate, book number one. This is a uh, Russian translation from Antonov, Anton Imanov and Sergei Savanov. Um, they've been actually getting a lot of their works translated from Russian into English recently. Um, so this is another one of them. Um, also out is going to be on November the 10th, The First Peak of the Force. And on November the 10th, the sixth book, 
and the Monsters, Mises, and Magic series. So we'll get uh, those books out about a month apart. And November 23rd, Dungeon Seeker, which is the second book in the Reborn Alliance series. November 23rd will also be the second book in the Biomedical Self-Engineering series. And on December the 1st, it'll be the Twilight Hatchling, Dream Stream Reality, book number two. December 3rd, League of Losers, book number two. December the 10th, it'll be Project Stellar, book number three. And a new book from the Magic Dome books is going to be December the 14th, The Keeper of Limbo, The Range, book number one. And on December the 15th, it'll be Drawing the Line, the Under Her Chronicles, book number two. December the 16th, Intro World Network, book number three. December 28th, the second volume in the Small Unit Tactics, which we reviewed a few weeks ago and enjoyed. And December 31st, last of the year, is going to be the Arkemi Online Chronicles, book number five. So all kinds of great stuff for you to enjoy in the upcoming near future. Um, but on to new releases and reviews. Okay, first up this week is going to be Something Full Murder Hobo, written by Dakota Kraut. Uh, this book is 373 pages, $4.99. It's available on Kindle Limited, and here's the author's description. Trapped between worlds, Potentia might be the way out. Time to kill something. Luke is an apprentice leather worker training with his family to one day take over the business. He and his friends Andre, Taylor, and Zed have known each other forever and swear that nothing will ever tear apart their friendship. Then the royal decree comes, with the dynasty of dogs invading and strange monsters appearing in the Hollow Kingdom, a draft has been implemented. Everyone 17 or older is required to be tested for potential. If they have it, they will join the mysterious and renowned Ascender Corps. If not, they will be drafted into the Legion as a forced recruit. Three of the friends test as powerful, or dangerous, classes of Ascender. Luke is found to have a potential, barely, but when he steps through the portal to begin his training, he is pulled into a plane that shouldn't exist. With no class trainer, the possibility of survival is low. Luke decides that he wants to live and he keeps his humanity, and keeping his humanity isn't going to help. The, his best chance is going full murder hobo. <laughs> I just love the title on this. Uh, it's super funny. And the, the, the novel itself follows suit. Um, this is a multi-narrative story. Each one of those characters that are mentioning actually get um, their viewpoint of what's happening in their world. Um, and a lot of the first half of the story is really just training for each one of those characters. But the main focus is, of course, on the, the murder hobo, uh, who's a very fun, interesting character who has his own world. Um, and it's a, it's an interesting kind of delve into what it would be like to be isolated on a world where you don't know what's happening and you're, it, it's supposed to be a training world for your class, but nobody's there to help you along the way and having to survive and figure out the rules and struggle for power and survival and becoming more powerful and becoming essentially over the course of the time he spends there, losing his humanity, um, to to become powerful and, and and to overcome the obstacles that are placed in front of him in, in this kind of RPG training system uh, that exists in this world. Um, and of course, the other, other narratives are so interesting. To me, they're not quite as interesting, but they're still interesting because they're doing their own kind of RPG perspective for their own different classes. Um, the second of the story, full on kind of dungeon dive, monster slice of life kind of adventuring action stuff, really good still as well. Um, it it's for me. Just a fun, good story. It has interesting powers, quirky characters, lots of fun. Uh, the RPG stuff exists, but it, again, it's, it's not the d and kind of stuff. So it's a custom um, system with stats and substats and abilities and powers that level and evolve. Potentia instead of XP in this case. Um, good, solid stuff. The author, Dakota Crowd, is always really good about tracking his numbers and making them make sense and making them... Um, feel really important and incorporated to the story and that does not change here. So it's always good stuff. For me, I had such a good time with it. This is a great story and I don't often uh, give out good reviews of that magnitude, I should say. Giving this a score of 8 out of 10, had such a good time with it, such a great time, I should say, uh, that I cannot but recommend it. It's super fun. Gets a score of 8 out of 10. Something Full Murder Hobo, book number two, with a score of 8 out of 10. And next up is going to be Reborn, Evolution, the Little Bitty Series, Warlock Chronicles, book number two, written by Victor Alucard. And this is supposed to be, I think, a, a translation story. Uh, translated story, I should say. It is 229 pages, $3.99. It's available on Kindle Unlimited. Here is the author's description. 
the primordial waters, full of algae and unicellular organisms, not quite how one would imagine the end of the world, is it? The goal is to evolve and reach land. Use your teeth, claws, stings, and whatever else you deem appropriate to take down your opponents and survive in the new world. Dan used to work at the psychic agency, making a living by swindling naive clients. One day, however, this came to a sudden halt, and a group of thugs paid him a visit and took him away. As if that wasn't bad enough, the world had decided that it had enough of us humans. After that, humanity was no more. Those who survived the apocalypse have been forced to fight for their lives. Dan, to his misfortune, didn't become a gray-bearded wizard he had always hoped to be. Little did he know that he'd hoped that he'd be forced to start his new life from the very beginning. Perhaps he should have paid more attention in biology class. Okay, now, um, this story takes a direction that you wouldn't have thought of based upon the cover. Uh, the cover art says something fantasy, maybe undead, and... There are definitely some darker elements, as far as like magic stuff, to, towards the end of the story. But this is actually a monster evolution story that takes you from being a single-celled organism uh, to a multicellular custom monster. So it really does remind a lot of reviewers of the game Spore, and that game to, uh, is an evolutionary game where you design your own creatures in, the, in a cellular system, on a cellular level rather, and it goes through adventures and fights other monsters and tries to survive, and you change its design based upon its circumstances and, and what works to keep it alive, keep it procreating. And then eventually the game moves you to a larger creature and a larger creature, and each environment requires new evolutionary traits or abilities or, or, or pathways so they can, can you survive as not just one organism, but also as groups and cultures. And that same kind of mentality or kind of um, gameplay style is definitely what this are, the mechanics of the story are. Um, there are definitely other conflicts in the story, and it, each one of these characters in the story, the main characters, of course, the, the, the warlock character, but everybody in his um, faction they all think they have their minds so they're all very human in their emotions and expressions but they live in these different forms of an evolving culture and society and having to deal with these different um conflicts whether it's finding food or facing off against moms who want to kill and eat them to survive or or, or deciding on how they're going to evolve as individual groups or characters um or even eventually player versus player as they meet other factions who are also trying to uh, become the winners in this um game or whatever case it's going to be i'm trying to spoil things for you guys um but this the story is entertaining if you're okay with that kind of stuff again this is not your general um regular fantasy action adventure stuff again it very much is like that video game sport so if you've ever played that or if you if you're familiar with like a monster evolution kind of mentality or story um and you're okay with the slice of life nature of those kind of tales i think you'll enjoy this as well um uh good good stuff here for me i especially liked the power set for the main character which is low on the esp side and that is a nice way to introduce a control wizard element uh to the gameplay style and the evolutionary opportunities for the main character um very fun very good interesting i again I, I've, I've read these kind of stories before so it wasn't completely new to me um but it was nice uh, to, to read something a little bit different gets a score of 7.8 out of 10 um that's reborn evolution a liberty series warlock chronicles book number one with a score of 7.8 out of 10 and next up, we have Valentine's and an Apocalypse by Tao Wong. This is a short story set in the System Apocalypse series. It's 24 pages, not very long. Um, it's normal price point is $2.99. I picked it up for $0.99. Cents. It was on sale. Um, but it's also not on Kindle Unlimited, which I think is a mistake, but that's the author's choice. He might have just published other places uh, for promotional material. And here's his description of the story. What happens when the apocalypse is over? To love, strained and torn. How do you pick up the pieces when life stabilizes? It's a question our heroes must ask themselves when they're no longer fighting off swarms of monsters, no longer struggling for credits and levels. And the author says that this takes place between books five and six of the System Apocalypse series and features new characters. So nobody in this story is going to be somebody you've, you've read about before. It's not the main characters at all. These are completely independent characters. Um, and for me, that was definitely a detriment. Um, I, I, it's always kind of a hit or miss with some of these short stories that are set in a, in a story world that I like. 
Um, sometimes they're really interesting. Sometimes they give me perspective on different aspects of a culture or society. Um, or just if they're featuring main characters, this gives you a little more depth to their character potential or their background. And in this case, none of that happens. Um, this is, this is, I don't think I would have picked this up at its normal price of tuning in. I kind of only picked it because it was 99 cents. Um, otherwise I think it's too expensive for, for, for what I consider a value deal. Um, and I really like the system of apocalypse series. I like the main story series that the author writes. Um, this story just frankly didn't do it for me. It's not badly written. There's nothing wrong on a technical level. Um, but the thing I like about the system Hawk series is the RPG apocalypse. I like the act. I like the action that comes along with the author's general writing in that series. None of that exists here. Like there's, there's, there's still are some RPG mentions of like what this husband and wife do, but they're not fighters. One's a librarian. One is a tr linguist. Um, and they have their respective powers and they have access to inventory and their jobs and everything. But the story is really more of a social conflict between a man and his wife, a husband and wife rather, realizing that they need to reconnect as a couple because their their relationship is kind of uh, petered off because of the apocalypse and, and the stresses that occur there. Um, and it's simple. It's cute. Just wasn't my cup of tea. It didn't work for me because, again, it's all, it's all very much social kind of, I'm going to say conflict, it's just a social realization. And I was like, oh, that's cute. I just I'm like, where's the action? Where's the RPG stuff that I like? And then that just really wasn't there for me. So it uh, gets a score six out of 10 for me. And again, that's not a bad score. It just says, didn't work for me. You might like it if you like these elements or you, you don't mind missing these elements, which I talked about. Uh, so it's Valentine's in an Apocalypse with a score six out of 10. Didn't work for me, but you may enjoy it if you like uh more social stuff okay next up is gonna be the sorcerer king and this is a um actually again a web novel on the uh, web comic rather um here's the description of it 10 years ago the monster horde from the rift formed from space and time and started attacking mankind at the same time people have tr started to awaken the power and began hunting monsters for fame and money soon uh, Lee Sung Hoon, in need of money because of his mother's sickness, takes a dangerous job to help hunt these monsters four times a month by acting as bait for the hunters. But one day he is heavily injured by a monster and remembers his past life as a sorcerer king. Huh? Did I just die? Wait, I was a sorcerer king Kratos in my previous life? That's literally what it says, folks. I'm not <laughs> making this up. I said it continues. Um, with his past memories, Sung Hoon's overpowered magic show begins. Um, and I should forewarn you, this is a translated story. Uh, it, it's it's trans There's no English license for this yet, so this is essentially a fan translation for people who are grabbing the original raw copies and translating them uh, on their own. Um with, with support from, from viewers and readers and whatever the case is. Um, there are over 105 chapters, plus currently available. It is free online. And I'm going to have links in the show notes for the fans translated version. And again, once there is a, a, an officially licensed English uh, uh, translation for this, I'll replace those with uh, those notes so that the authors, we make sure that the authors, original producers of the work get paid uh, as they should. Okay, uh, my review. This is a set up more like a monster hunting um, dungeon dive set in a modern world with the calamity happening 10 years in the past and monsters appearing along with people being awakened to get those powers to fight them. Um, so like solo leveling, which is another webcomic or web novel, um, the main character is a low level helper who risks his life being bait to help pay for his mother's medical bills. Where the story shifts once the main character is injured and recalls that he has his past life that gives an overpowered magical abilities. Um, and becomes one of being awakened where he's able to learn up and level experience from killing monsters. Um, this is sort of the story where in the beginning, it's just the main character seeing what he remembers in a power set and, and using those old magical memories to becoming a, a, a powerful dungeon diver and helping his family out and 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 eventually trying to find a way to help everybody else out and becomes a slice of light action adventure story where he he's faced off against more and more powerful enemies and monsters. Um, and it's just interesting, it was interesting to watch and read the story to see essentially the support character become like super OP, super overpowered. Um, and, and seeing how the original writer and author, it keeps upping the stakes 
in each issue and each kind of conflict to keep presenting him with challenges and the story continues and it's not a finished story as far as i'm aware um so it, it, it's still going on i had a really good time with just re i'm, I'm very very much a visually action oriented um person where i enjoy those kind of stories and this definitely created a good thing that i i like the magic i like the how it is translated into levels and experience magic and magical repair and spells and essentially the, how the main character is kind of fusing science and magic um in this world because he has past memories of being a super uber mage where the rpg system didn't exist and so he's translating that and combining it with modern technology and and the system and the gates and monsters that appear to to his benefit and to become more powerful and because he realizes oh something's happening with the world and there, there are these larger conflicts at stake um and so it's it's interesting um again but the main focus is really just like monster fighting and 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 seeing how he's using these magical powers um so it's interesting um i liked it the art is good i'm actually going to pull up the artwork real quick so you guys who are watching the video version of the podcast can see excuse me what it looks like and it'll give me a second to, to do so um here here we go uh, and the art style is really nice i actually really appreciate the art style um clean lines nice backgrounds um clear actiony kind of orientation of, of the story actually Got to change modes for us. There you go. Now you guys can see <laughs> the artwork for this instead of me just talking about it and looking at myself. Um, I guess I like some really cool lines, clean stuff, good artwork. I really enjoyed it. Um, again, the action comes through really well in the art style as eventually does the RPG aspect of it as well. Um, so really good stuff. I enjoyed that aspect of it as well. So there you go. Um, so as far as I'm concerned, had a good time with it. I'm still reading the the new chapters when they come out on a weekly basis. Uh, give it a score of 7.7 out of 10. Had a nice time with it. Really good story. I am the Sorcerer King, which is a good recommendation for me for a webcomic. That's free. Free to free you to enjoy. So there you go. And that is it for the show, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for listening, for watching, for taking the time to to listen to me go on and on about the genre that I love and for being letting me be a part of your life, your community, and being part of the literature community and, and remember, uh, always be free to share the love for the podcast by sharing the show. Um, hit the share button, hit the like button, help other people find the podcast and also find the wonderful genre that is lit RPG. And you can help share the love there. So thanks again for hanging with me, folks. Uh, we'll have a link in the show notes for all the Facebook groups and all the uh, links for the podcast where you can find us on a regular basis. Um, but until we can hang out again, folks, remember to go read some lit RPG. Thanks for hanging out with me today.